Where's my bell? Hello. Welcome back to school. Um, this is probably set up really wonky because I am sitting at a different angle than I need to be. Um, so this is a method of writing. Um, I have a video that talks about the brailler. I think I have a couple of videos that talk about the brailler, which is the big clunky thing that looks like, um, an old school typewriter. Um, this would be the equivalent of a, you know, like pencil or pen. Um, this is called a slate and stylus. And on here, um, uh, classwork, I don't want to write on my classwork. So I'm going to get a couple sheets of scratch paper and we're going to talk about the slate and stylus today. All right. So I have one sheet of paper. It's a very small sheet of paper, but nonetheless, it is a sheet of paper. So first, um, let us talk about what we have. Obviously we have our piece of paper. <laughs> That's a giveaway. We have a tool that is really critical. It's called a stylus. It is basically, um, a wooden or plastic, um, handle and it has, I wouldn't say it's a sharp point, but it's, I mean, it could do some damage, <laughs> but it does have a little rounded edge point at the bottom of, of the, of the actual point, but it's not like sharp, like a knife, like you're not gonna, uh, cut your finger or anything. Like I could do, I could rub on my hand and it, it awakens the senses, but it's not going to like cut into my fingers or anything. Um, Obviously, if I press really hard, it probably would, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, the next item, oh, by the way, you have to have one of these to use one of these. I'm going to put the paper aside. So next, this is what is called a board slate. Um, you have... Uh, the slate itself, which this comes out, it has two, um, little, I don't know, notches. <laughs> I don't know what these are called, but it has two notches and along the slate itself, there are holes in which the notches go into. So as a person is writing, when they get to the end of a line, they basically pick it up and move it down to the next line of holes. Um, up here, this is almost the equivalent of like a clipboard, but you have to swing your top part up and then this lifts. And there's actually a couple prongs um, where, where my two fingers are. That is to hold the paper in place. So you stick your paper in, you press this down and it will actually lock the paper in place like a clipboard. And then this thing you could flip down and it will just keep it more secure. Um, to be honest, I don't know if this thing actually does anything, but yeah. Um, so let's, um, oh, the slate. Um, it has two pieces and you stick the paper between the, the two pieces. Um, the back part of the slate is filled with a whole bunch of cells. Let me bring this up and show you guys closer. You see how there's a whole bunch of cells in there? Um, 
this is how your dots are actually produced using the slate. Um, and the front half, uh, these are called windows. Um, and as you're writing, you're writing within the windows. Now, within each window, there is a special little groove. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, if it doesn't focus. Okay, yeah. There's there's little grooves along the sides of each window. If memory serves me correct, I think these are called scallops or something like that. Um, but basically, they are guide lines or guiding um guiding posts within the cell when you're writing for writing you can use these uh scallops to actually feel where you are in the braille cell now that covers the slate uh the back side there's nothing there i mean obviously it's got the the indents of the dots. Now, the next thing is writing with the slate. Um, if you don't have a good geometrical brain or whatnot, um, you're gonna have to kind of develop that. <laughs> so you take your paper, well, first you have to open your slate Put it up at the top, take your paper, stick it in the front here. Uh, yeah, let's do this. That should work out. Well, there's one hole. It may not get to the other one. Nope, it may not get to any of them. I don't know what that is. Oh, they're way down there. Okay. Blind girl doesn't know how to use her slate. <laughs> so basically, I'm kind of feeling to see where the holes are the to, to hold the paper in place. So we'll do that. Pull that down. And you heard it pop into place. Hold on your little notch. Close your slate, and now you're ready for writing. Now... If when, when you're writing, you're writing the letters in um, more or less reverse order, if that makes sense. So in mirrored fashion, we'll say in mirrored fashion. So initially when you're writing in Braille, let me get a, a marker. Actually, let me, yeah, let me get a marker. It'll work out better. Um, those are pens. That's a blindfold. There we go. All right. So, when you're initially writing in Braille or reading in Braille, when you're writing with the with the Brailler, and when you're reading, you're going to read from left to right. And you're gonna write from left to right. If you're going to write the letter A, you're gonna make that one, and then B, dot one and two, C, one, two, or one, three, one, four. <laughs> it's late. Um, D, one, four, five, and so on and so forth. You're writing your letters from left to right. Now with the slate, what you're doing is you're actually writing the letters on the back side of the paper. Literally, that is what you're doing. You're, you're writing on the back side of the paper. So what I think on when I'm doing this, I think of the dot order uh, traditionally, it's um, darn it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
This is your traditional braille layout for dot numbers. With the slate, you want to think of the dot numbers as one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the pattern that you're going to think on if you're writing with a slate. So if we were to write the letter A, we'd pick up our stylus and we would kind of feel worth it. Usually a whole page would be here, but this is just a small piece. So I kind of got to feel around and feel for the paper. Still don't feel it. Nope. Mm. This feels like it's paper. Yeah. Okay, this is definitely not paper. This is not paper. This is paper. Okay, so we found the paper and we are going to make the letter A. So we're going to start with dot, dot one, which because we're writing in the mirror version, we have to start in the right hand upper part of the cell. So we hit or we punch dot one. And as far as holding this, the stylus, um, you want to try to have a light hand and a light wrist. And literally when you're writing with a slate, you actually need to use your upper arm. It's kind of weird, but if you use your hand and your forearm, you're going to, you're going to have writing issues, um, later on down the road. So you want to actually keep your hand as light as possible, your forearm as light as possible, and literally use your upper arm, your shoulder, your back to push into the paper. Uh, kind of like you do when you're playing piano. Okay. So this is letter A. So now we're going to pick up the stylus carefully and move over into the next cell. We're going to put a space there. So this is going to be easier to, to follow along. So we're going to make the letter B and B is dots one and two. And again, since we're writing this in the mirror, we need to write in the right hand part of the cell. So there's one. And then at this point I'm using the scalp scallop to feel where dot two is. And I just punch dot two. Continuing on with the letter C. Again, I'm skipping one cell for a space. And I'm going to start at dot one again, which is in the upper right hand corner because we're writing on the back side of the paper. So I'm going to uh, push in dot one with the upper arm. And then I'm going to pick up the slate or the stylus, pardon me, and press in on dot four, which is the upper left hand part of the cell. And then I'm going to pick up the stylus again, feel for that next hole, uh, feel for the next cell. We're going to leave that blank. And then we're going to write the letter D. This is probably going to be the first letter that we actually truly have to flip around. So if we were to write D, we need to write out dots one, four, and five. And this is going to be the mirror. So, um, we're going to start in the right hand corner of the cell for dot one. And then we're going to slide over to the left hand part of the cell and punch in dots four and five. There's four and there's five. And the cool thing about the slate is you are physically writing in every dot of every cell that you're making. This is the equivalent of 
a sighted person learning how to write with a pencil. They have to physically write out every stroke of their letters. And the same is true here with the slate. Um, I would actually, like, if I had a blind child, I would have them using the slate before using the brailler. Because if they can write with a slate, they're going to know the dots of each letter and contraction and punctuation inside and out. So, um, that is, oh, as, um, let's see. Let's, um, let me just write that out again or just write out something here. And we can just kind of do a little how it would look like if someone's reading. So let's do... We ended off on D, so we're going to go E, and again, we're going to start with the upper part of the cell, E, and let's make an L. We're going to actually write a word, so the L is all going to be in the right-hand part of the cell because we're writing in uh, the mirror of what we're reading. And then we're going to put an F and then we're going to put an I and then we're going to put an E because I have no clue how to spell Elfie. <laughs> um, okay. So that is how you would write. Now you would then have to find a safe place to put your stylus because if you lose your stylus, you are going to be up a crick without a paddle. This device will not work unless you have the stylus. Um, potentially, you could possibly get away with a pen or something, but you're going to end up ruining your pen tip because of the pressure. So we're going to put the stylus um, next to you guys on the music desk because it's not going to fall off there. Oh, I wanted to point out something. This stylus is a little special in the sense that it has a rounded point. Let me get this into focus. And it also has a flat point. So this is to prevent the stylus from rolling off the desk when, when it's set down. And usually most people will just put it down on the flat part. That's how I would do it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of a neat thing there with the stylus. Um, and again, I <laughs> set it down, almost lost it, but it's on the desk, um, on the music desk. Okay, so then we take out the paper. We open the slate. We take out open... Um, the clipboard and I usually just close the slate just because this thing isn't really held on by anything and we need to find the braille and we find the braille right here and a person basically reads A, B, C, D I'm reading with one hand here because it's a pretty small piece of paper. And here you have E-L-F-I-E. -E, Elfie, I think. I don't know if that's spelled right. Um, if we were to continue down the next on the next line of, of the cell or the page, let me just show that real quick. Um, if you're really good, you can actually line up your your braille dots again where they were, but I don't think this is going to work. Okay, so that's in. So we wrote a couple lines on this. If we needed to write more on the page, I'm feeling for my slate stylus. Here it is. If we need to write more on the page, we just lift up on the um on the style on the slate and pull it down until it goes into the next holes 
and then we could write, let's see here, let's do uh, K and then we have K L we're going to space and then M and then we can space and then put N um, and then we can go down um, I'm just randomly writing out stuff and then we got oh well, some of these I have to actually kind of think on like how to make them o p um and as you're writing with the slate like if you know what you're writing you really can kind of go whatever way is going to be easier for you like there are, I just totally did everything upside down and backwards when I was writing P, Q, R. Um, whoop, there we go. Um, if your stylus falls out, oops, I think I wrote that wrong. I think I just wrote a V. If, if your stylus falls out of the window, it means you're probably using too much pressure um, when you're feeling your way through the cell, um, which is something I, I need to work on. Um, and then we'll just, um, see, oh gosh, see whatever that is. Um, and then you would, you get done writing, you would move into the next part of the page and then you would put down your next word or whatever it is that you're writing. Um, again, I'm using too much arm when I'm feeling for these uh, braille sections. All right, so then we get done with that. We put our stylus up or safely so we don't lose it and we remove the paper out of the slate. We move the paper out of the clipboard. I usually close that and lock it just to keep it in one place. And you flip the paper over and you have a whole page of Braille. Let's read and see what we wrote. We have A, B, C, D. Obviously, I mean, small piece of paper, you're not going to get very much on here. Um, and then Alfie, which again, I don't know if it's spelled right, but E-L-F-I-E -E is what I have written down, letter phonetically. Um, and then I have K-L-M and then N. And then the next Braille, I have O. P, Q, oh, I did write that right, R. I thought I wrote that wrong. Yeah, that's the letter R. Wonderful. And then at the bottom here, I wrote down the word um, L-O-V-E, which is the word love. Um, or is it love? Love? I don't know. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, in short, how the slate and stylus works. Um, this is using a slate board, but the concept is essentially the same if you have other types of slates. Um, I've got some, but I don't want to drag this out, but maybe I'll do a, like a video to show different kinds of slates that I have. Um, but in short, that pretty much is how um, the use of the slate and stylus work with uh, writing with Braille. So I hope you, that was exciting and eventful for you guys and educational. Um, if you would like anything else, comment or, you know, throw some suggestions and we'll see what we can do. 
Until then, if you want, you can like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, ring the notification bell for all notifications.